Here we go. I'm really doing this. We got pulmonary edema. Injection site on his left arm. I'm gonna go with an IV drug overdose. Tan lines here. He's missing a wedding band and a wristwatch. Just a driver's license and credit card on the dresser. Thomas Lupo, 36. He checked in yesterday, 2 p.m. 2.30, the housekeeper saw a young lady enter the room. Brunette, Caucasian, mid-20s. Maybe Mr. Lupo awarded on a Sunday matinee. Hey, there was another hooker ripoff two weeks ago at the McGarrigal on 12th. It's almost enough to make a guy swear off infidelity. <laughs> you losing your nerve, Cormac? I did say almost. We need to check the phone calls your husband made. Can you give me his number? I never remember it. I got it on speed dial. Can I? How were things with you and your husband? Last couple of weeks, it's like he pushed back from the table. He wasn't talking to me. You know, you guys should talk to his brother, Cyrus. Oh, it's here. Cyrus Lupo. Yeah, he's flying in today from somewhere. Uh, Tommy had a, a wedding band, platinum wedding band. It's missing, along with his watch. I gotta see to my kids. You talk to his brother. Cyrus. Mm-hmm. I hope he's got more to say than the wife did. That lady just didn't want to deal. Anyway, the Emmy promised me a tox report by tomorrow morning. Ah, here we go. Detective Cyrus Lupo, next of kin, his brother Thomas Lupo. He's assigned to NYPD Intel. Cyrus has been overseas the last four years. You just happen to know to look for him in the personnel index system. No, no, no. Detective Lupo was a patrolman in this precinct before your time. Hey. Ah, uh, your hunch was on the money. My hunch? The message you left last night. I didn't leave a message? No, I did. But nobody knows me, so I used your name. I'm sorry. Anyway, I looked for the melanoma and found tumors in Mr. Lupo's lungs and liver. Stage four, he had maybe three months. Yeah, it was the, uh, it was the cancer he, he beat five years ago. It came back. I, I found the painkillers he was taking. Uh, well, and by the looks of these tumors, he needed them. I always have a cause of death for you. Paralysis of the heart brought on by an overdose of potassium chloride. What was he doing? Trying some homemade cancer treatment? In these quantities, you don't see it used much outside of death row. It's a drug of choice for lethal injections. How about suicides? In combination with other drugs, as a matter of fact, yes. He fits. The bank said he borrowed against his business to pay off his mortgage. He put his affairs in order. I'm so sorry, detective. All right, let's change the classification on the blue to suspected suicide. Lieutenant, if you do that, you know this goes to the bottom of the pile. Maybe my brother suicided, but he wouldn't know where to get these drugs. Somebody helped him. Maybe that woman. We'll look for her, but be real, man. We got open murder cases here. And I'll do respect your brother. You don't know anything about my brother, all right? If, if this woman had tried to help him instead of handing him a loaded syringe. Look, I will give this the time it deserves, but maybe your brother had good reasons to take a shortcut to the exit. Maybe if you called him back and talked to him, you'd know why. Let me work this case, please. I can find this woman. My CEO at Intel won't mind. I'm out of there in three months anyway. Not only is this against policy for you to work on this case, it's a bad idea all around. Van Buren. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, thanks. Grab your hat. Someone else just took a shortcut to the exit. Mr. Driscoll was confined to a wheelchair. The driver who takes him to his physical therapy came in and found him. How did he get in? The door was unlocked. There are burn marks in the ejection site. Typical of a potassium chloride injection. 
Same M.O. as Mr. Lupo. Maybe with the same little helper. Serial suicide artist. Try not to look so excited. The tox exam showed the same three drugs in Mr. Lupo and Mr. Driscoll. It took three to kill them. Psychobarbital puts the victim to sleep, pancuronium paralyzes them, and then potassium chloride stops the heart. Someone had to rig an IV to deliver all three drugs in a time sequence. This sounds familiar. It should. The last time this MO was used was 10 years ago by Dr. David Lingard in an assisted suicide. Dr. Death, he was convicted of murder. After admitting on TV that he administered the drug that killed his victim. He got out of jail a month ago. Mila, she works at a hospice on Avenue A. Larry Driscoll had a friend who passed away here. That's how I met him. When Larry decided to terminate his life, he came to me for advice. I work with the dying, and Larry thought I might be able to help him. So did you help him? I told him don't expect any help from the straight medical community. They're like everybody else. They think like sheep. Sheep? Are you a Dr. Death groupie, Miss Ames? Dr. David Lingard? No, I'm, I'm not a groupie. MHL, Mila Hames Lingard? When I went into nursing, my father said it would go easier if I used my mother's name. What about Tom Lupo? Were you the one that called him from the diner? I was returning his call. He heard about me from Larry. They met on a Right to Die website. Were you the one that went to his hotel room and hooked him up to an IV? You're not going to trick me like they did my father. Those guys committed suicide all by themselves. There are videos to prove it. Videos of what? The suicides? Bill Nolan has them. He's doing a special on my father for his show. He's got the videos. Larry, you've been sick for years. So why now? My condition was getting worse month by month. I came to believe that the doctors and my family were keeping the truth about my disease from me. But now, thanks to you, Bill, I got my real medical report. That's right. Thanks to you, I now know I have ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. It's a slow, certain, agonizing death. So this is my response. No one helped me. I rigged it myself. We accept that Mr. Driscoll and Mr. Lupo chose to commit suicide and we're willing to give you immunity for helping them. In exchange, you'll tell us how Mr. Driscoll learned he had Lou Gehrig's disease. Bill Nolan gave Larry the medical report. And how did Mr. Nolan come to be involved? After my father got out of jail, Mr. Nolan kept hounding him for an interview. I thought I could help my father. I told Nolan about this man Tom Lupo, I told him I was there when he committed suicide. He got very excited. He wanted to witness a suicide. He said it would help my father's cause. I introduced him to Larry. Larry was thinking of suicide. He thought he was a lot sicker than what the doctors were telling him, but he couldn't make up his mind. And what did he do? Did he ask Mr. Nolan for help? Nolan just kept talking about a deadline. So he used a source at the hospital to get Larry's report. When the report said Larry had Lou Gehrig's, Larry made up his mind. Mila, the report was wrong. Larry didn't have Lou Gehrig's. But for the fact that he was told he had Lou Gehrig's, do you think he'd be alive today? He said as long as there was hope, he couldn't bring himself to end his life. He told Mr. Nolan this? You go pick up Nolan, we're charging man too. This looks like trouble. You mind getting up, Mr. Nolan? I have to get ready to tape the segment for Sunday's show. You're pretty enough now for your mugshot. Now get up! Mugshots! You're under arrest for murder. Artie called Gerard now. Mr. Nolan was charged with second-degree manslaughter. He pled not guilty, and the judge set bail at $250,000. I've already told your goons that I've been a good boy. Besides, Mila and I don't talk very much. Really? She said she got involved with Nolan to vindicate you. How annoying. 
Your daughter's devotion is annoying. I always felt that the whole paternity thing was a distraction from my work. Connie. These are letters that Mila sent him in prison. This one she wrote from camp when she was 17. She included this picture. Check out the dude with the crutches. It's Driscoll. My counselor, Larry, is such a cool guy. He knows all about you, Daddy, and he thinks it's unjust that you're in jail. He has a disease called spinal muscular atrophy, but he told me if he ever ends up in a wheelchair and miserable, he would end his life, and he hopes there'll be someone like you to help him. It sounds like Larry was ready to commit suicide because of his SMA. The mistaken diagnosis wasn't a factor. Sounds like it. I'm trying to stop being angry at how unfair the world is. You're just trying to help people, Daddy, but they take advantage of your honesty. You gave an interview, and what did you get? 10 years in prison. And that creep, he got an Emmy. That creep. She blames Nolan for sending her dad to prison. And now she's trying to send him to prison for manslaughter. Payback. Call the detectives. We're arresting Mila Hames for murder.